Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine and I vlog daily to keep you updated on real life situation in my country Ukraine during this awful war with Russia. If you're new to the channel, check the videos and if you like them, only if you like them because we're not in Russia and people are not obliged to do what they don't like. But anyway, if you like them, if you're interested in Ukraine and the way we are going to win this war, subscribe to my channel. And today is... Uh, Saturday, tomorrow we are going to celebrate Orthodox Easter and I'm going to speak not about the preparation to the holiday but missile attacks that were targeted on Ukraine yesterday. Most of all the cities suffered Slavyansk which is located in the Netsk region and I want to tell you more about this city so that you will understand why it is important and I think uh, anyway, the more you know about Ukraine, the easier it is to understand why it is so important to win this war with orcs. Slavyansk is located in the Netsk region. It is a city that was founded in the 17th century. It is connected with industry and salt production. And it was the first city that was occupied in Ukraine after Crimea in 2014. On the 12th of April 2014, Russian orcs, uh, controlled by Girkin, who is a famous FSB agent and also an influencer in various separatist movements on over, all over the world, uh, tried to um, capture the city. They managed to do it and it was occupied until the July of 2014. And for a certain period of time, it operated as a center of pro-Russian separatist movement and lots of Russian FSB agents were coordinating uh, attacks on Ukraine back in 2014 from Slovyansk. But it was quickly liberated, returned back to Ukraine, and it is a pretty big town. It has 100,000 uh, population and is operating like life is uh, present uh, there right now. Yesterday it was targeted, uh, minimum seven missiles hit the city and traditionally for orcs they destroyed civilian infrastructure and killed civilians, once again demonstrating that Russia is a terrorist state. So, uh, in Slavyansk, five apartment buildings were destroyed, five private houses were destroyed, a hospital, a shop, and 12 cars. We see no military infrastructure, no NATO databases or secret bio laboratories. And uh, what is uh, the worst during all of this missile attacks that people died and the number of uh, uh, victims actually uh, reached nine people four are still missing uh, because many buildings were destroyed and it's sometimes difficult to find people uh, in the remains of these buildings. And a very tragic story happened and was observed yesterday. Uh, a child was found and it was found alive, but on the way to the hospital, uh, the child died. And uh, that is an example against whom Russia uh, fights, what uh, special military operation it conducts in Ukraine. And this special military operation equates to killing civilians, destroying schools, trying to demoralize Ukrainian people and to erase unique Ukrainian culture and identity and to proclaim dark, awful Ruski Mir on larger territories closer to the borders of the European Union and so on. Many countries who know what Russia is, like our friends in Finland, in the Baltic countries, they do understand that this is not war against Ukraine. This is war against a democratic world, against freedom, against uh, free choice, against free speech, against uh, progress. And uh, that is why we have to stop them and the sooner the better, because with each passing day of this war, more and more people, more and more children die and Russia comes closer and closer to uh, your borders too. <clears throat> and uh, for me, it is always very symbolic uh, that close to different religious holidays like Christmas, like Easter, they demonstrate the worst of uh, their 
um, I cannot say character because it's not a character of that evil nature and perhaps it is something demonic in uh, them. And uh, we always know that they like to congratulate us not only with like truly Ukrainian holidays like the Day of Independence or the Day of Constitution, but also religious holidays. So we do understand that Easter, uh, Christmas uh, is a dangerous period and you have to be careful. But people continue celebrating, people continue preparing to celebrate Easter. And uh, tomorrow I will show you the way I did it because many of you during live stream told me that you'd like to see what is a traditional Easter preparation is and uh, the weather is awful by the way it's very windy and very uh, rainy but this is a part of Ukrainian spring too and knowing how many people suffer knowing how many places are destroyed and uh, other things you learn not to worry about weather, not to worry about, I don't know, uh, the currency <laughs> rate or uh, the dinner that is not perfect. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for buying me coffees. Thank you for becoming my patrons. Thank you for thinking about Ukraine, supporting Ukraine in this fight. And do talk to your friends, politicians, people who doubt. Because once again, this is not just war of Russia against Ukraine. This is war of Russia against uh, our global human uh, moral virtues, standards, freedom, democracy and um, choice because like living with one president for uh, 20 plus years is tragic. I have tweeted that by the way recently it has come up to my mind that many of the soldiers who now die in Ukraine were born when Putin was already a president and I think it's awful even if you have the best president like that you spend all of your life with just one person ruling your country even the best person will lose normality uh, but a person with uh, Putin's um, number of mental disorders of course turned into monster and Russian society helped him to achieve this goal. But thank you that you are different. Thank you for being a close community. Thank you for your support. Slava Ukraini.